Alright guys, in today's video I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to react to Austin Dunham's latest video called How to Get a Stronger Way at Pull Up because a couple of days ago I was actually browsing my YouTube and I found this video and I've been watching Austin for a very long time now so I was like well let's just see what this video is all about and I watched it and I was like this is not right. This video is currently sitting at around 13,000 views and I don't want 13,000 people getting the wrong idea. So in today's video, I'm going to be turning that video inside out, giving you guys my full review on that video so that you guys don't make these mistakes. And also, by the way, quickly before actually going into that video, I'm not saying anything about Austin uh, personally. I'm just going to be talking about training principles in this video. What's up, ADC and Austin? Back with another video. Today's video, I want to provide you some advice on how you can get a stronger weighted pull up. So, first thing I want to address is the frequency alongside with the rep scheme when training to get better at weighted pull ups. I do recommend that at minimum, at minimum, you want to train at least twice a week with a weighted pull up. Ideally, if you really want to progress in it fast, I would say three times a week. That's when I noticed the most progress in regards to my weighted pull-up training. I was training it three times a week. However, for the majority of my weighted pull-up training, I have been training it mostly twice a week on my pull days, back and biceps. And I put it at the forefront of my routine. So before I do any sort of rows, anything else, I'm always doing my weighted pull-ups first. Now in regards with the rep scheme, obviously in order to get better at training with heavier loads, you gotta train with heavier weight. So, I would recommend anywhere between three and six repetitions on a usual basis. All right, so, so far in this video, we pretty much got everything correct, even though these are all pretty obvious things. But then again, I've been making videos about obvious things quite a lot over the last few months, so can't really say anything bad about this. However, for myself, at this point in time in my training, I like to do some undulating periodization, which means some days in the week, I'll go higher reps, so like eight to 15, then other days I'll have my lower rep strength training. I mean, you guys know my opinion on undulating periodization. I've made a couple of videos about this. He does it, fine, whatever. I've made videos about this once again, and my personal opinion on this is that the vast, vast majority of you are much better off doing something else. I've talked about it in previous videos once again, like I think the vast majority of people are gonna be much better off focusing on one thing at a time instead of doing 15 things all at once. However, for the most part, I'm usually training within the three to six rep range all the time. Now let's move on to the training techniques to actually get a stronger weighted pull up. And some of these things I've never spoken about before. So the first one is actually doing a drop set, not drop setting at the weight, which I do love doing that too, but actually drop setting into a scapular pull up, a weighted scapular pull up. So what you're gonna do is take your working weight before the reps, and then instead of dropping down and attach the weight then resting, go into a drop set of doing scapular pull ups, right? And what that's gonna do is gonna actually strengthen your scapula up. I mean, Austin, um, a scapula is a piece of bone. You don't train bones. Like, you can't strengthen your scapula. You can strengthen the muscles around the scapula. You can't strengthen the scapula. It's once again a piece of bone. Like, not saying this is a bad thing to do, because for a lot of people, it can be really, really helpful to strengthen the depression of your scapula to improve the foam on weighted pull ups. Um, but it's not strengthening the scapula, it's strengthening the muscles around the scapula. Because for the most part, it's only trained either if you're doing bodyweight scapula pulls, which I had taught that when you should do a warm up for your weighted pull up workouts. But for the most part, most people will never do weighted scapula pulls. So it doesn't get trained. I mean, it does get trained because every single time that you actually do a pull up, you depress the scapula. So those muscles actually get worked, they get trained. Um, unless you obviously do your pull up with an elevated scapula like this and then you just pull up by that which you don't do i don't do most people don't do um what i think you mean is they don't get isolated which you do with uh scapular pulls so just a little detail there that's the first tip do a drop set to weighted scapular pulls after every single set you'll notice that first part especially is going to get a bit stronger but that's not all 
my other training tip that you should do is actually negatives. All right. This is where this video takes a turn for the worse. Like I was going to make a video on negatives a couple of weeks ago, did not do it, but here I am talking about it anyway. Way pull up negatives. Um, it's a tricky thing. Let's see what he has to say about this. So we forget that negatives can work not only with body weight skills, you know, handstands. A lot of people do that for training the handstand push up, but it works the same way with the weighted pull up. And this is something that has made a big impact in regards to me getting a heavier weighted pull up. So what you want to do is take a really heavy load. I would say anywhere between one to three reps, like your max. So like an RPE eight or nine, a really heavy weight for you. Look, I'm going to just stop this here. Like, here's the thing with negatives. Should you or should you not do them? Couple of things, right? Here's the thing. Nobody does heavy weight pull up negatives. And there's a very, very good reason for that. For, I mean, actually, there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one being the fatigue to benefit ratio. Doing heavy negatives even following his protocol which is not a good one anyway but whatever like the amount of fatigue you accumulate doing negatives is very very high and the reward you get from doing them is not anything fancy so they're really for that reason alone just the reward to input ratio is horrible also, the law of sport specificity. You get better at what you do, which by the way, Austin Lucid said in this video. Here's the thing, if you wanna get a strong weight of pull up, the concentric part of the movement has to be very, very strong. So the shortening of the muscles, the bicep and the lats, obviously. Um, doing negatives trains the eccentric part, so the lowering part of the movement. I'm not saying this will not strengthen your concentric part. What I will say is it's really not the best way to train that part of the movement. Um, and also, if you want to go for heavy one rep max, you have to be used to lifting heavy things down to up, not lowering heavy things up to down. So for that reason alone, it's really not a smart thing to be doing. Um, and also, assuming you don't have an online coach, like most people won't have. I mean, he's talking about an RPE nine weighted pull up. That's close to your one rep max. Like I said, like he actually said in that video, that's too heavy for the vast majority of people. Even assuming that you can guess your one rep max correctly, because for most people, they will pick something above that. They will pick something that is way too heavy and try to do that for negatives, resulting in sloppy form, resulting in not much control throughout the movement, resulting in not getting anything productive out of your negatives. And also increasing risk of injury because remember Austin like a few months ago you made a video about things that you don't do anymore. One of these things was heavy when I pull up negatives because they really fucked up your elbow. The first exercise I've stopped doing is the one arm pull up negative. The reason why I've stopped doing it is because I got a crazy elbow tendonitis or golfer's elbow, whatever you want to call it, after doing it for a few weeks, which actually set me back in my training. So anything revolving around a unilateral eccentric movement, I just overall tend to avoid just due to the high impact of injury and just overall my bad experiences. I mean, here you are two or three months later talking about doing heavy negatives on with pull-ups. Like, doesn't make sense, does it? But I actually go a long way and I really never see anybody training like that with weighted pull-ups. And the reason why I just talked about, if nobody's doing it, it may not be the best thing to do. You don't see people lowering 300 kg squats down doing negatives. Doesn't happen for a very good reason. Now the next one are holds. All right, once again, I mean, let let him finish and we'll talk about what I think about this later. But once again, if you watch any of my videos, you already know what's coming. So instead of taking a really heavy weight and doing negatives, instead what we're gonna do is take a lighter weight. So for me, it will be about one plate. And then from there, perform a static hold at the top of the movement. So you wanna aim for anywhere at least 10 seconds, not super low like our negatives. So to pick a weight that you can hold somewhere between 
eight to 15 seconds in that range. I like the 10 second range. And then from there, that's gonna strengthen up the top portion of the weighted pull up because from my experience, that's where a lot of people have. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna once again, like talk about doing top holds. Once again, made multiple videos about this over the last few months. Is doing weighted top holds a bad thing? I'm not saying that. What I will say is the top will always be the weakest part of, uh, of the pull up, like regardless of how much you train that. Should people train the top part of the pull up? I don't think a lot of people should because I think the majority of people should really focus on getting stronger to begin with. Um, also, his, his recommendations, like they really don't make much sense. I mean, 10 seconds, I mean, why? Also, you've got a max of four and a half plates. So doing one plate for top holds um, is about 25% of your one rep max, being generous. So I don't think that really makes sense. I mean, there's nothing wrong with training the top part of the movements, but really stating this is something that everybody should be doing, I don't think that's, I mean, I think that goes a bit too far. I don't think you should do that. Most of the issues, it's not necessarily the bottom part, but it's always this top part right here. So much like with calisthenic skills, once again, you can break down the movement and train that movement in which you're weak in. So if you notice how you're weak at the top of the movement, specifically train the top of the movement, but in a weighted fashion. Or if weight is too heavy for you, let's say you're only working with one plate right now, you can do a body weight or even micro load. Use a five pound plate, a 10 pound plate, or even a 25 pound plate. So guys, implement those training routines, I would say ideally between two to three times a week with your frequency. I promise you, if you're consistent, you're gonna see a big increase in your weighted pull up strength. And maybe one day you'll be doing a big boy weight like myself. This is actually the last thing I wanna talk about in this video. Um, Cause after this, it's like the outro, nothing really spectacular. Like this to me, is look is a thing right it's important guys to understand why people get to a certain point if you train with intensity with intent with a proper program for a long period of time like he's been doing this for years much longer than i have right he's got a very heavy max probably about 30 kg above mine so I know people are gonna rip on that, whatever. It's not because someone is strong you should do as they do. That's the main thing I wanna get across, like to kind of finish up this video. Like you can have someone who is giving shit advice, who has a very strong way of pull up. And I think the main thing you should do is always question what he's saying, regardless of his own results, regardless of what he claims, whatever. Like always be critical because this is a very good example of people who may be very strong but might not really understand training principles that well and it's very important to also note you're making this video for beginners like you're making this video for people that don't have three four plate way pull up maxes they don't need to do all this stuff and it's it's just a case of like Austin, you've made like dozens, hundreds, I don't know, maybe even thousands of videos. You've covered Disney previous videos and your old videos were really, really, really good. And I've watched all of them. And I think we're at a point now where you've made so many videos that you have to remake old videos and you wanna add things to them and you wanna talk about the secrets and you wanna talk about all these fancy things like negatives, like top holds, like scapula pulls. It all looks so incredibly sexy for people that have no idea how to structure training programs because they see something different. They've watched dozens of other videos talking about rep schemes and talking about frequency and talking about like how to get stronger, which essentially all comes down to doing the exercise for a long period of time with intent, with intensity, with a proper program. And these kind of videos stand out because they promise people significant results without doing the basics. 
yeah, just do scapular holds and just do like top holds and do like negatives because they really helped me with my weight pull up. Austin, you've been doing this for six years. I mean, you really have a very strong weight pull up, but that is because you trained for a long period of time with intensity, with intent, with a good program. So heads off to you, by the way, because once again, I'm not saying this to hate on you. I'm saying this because about 13,000 people watched this video over the last five uh, five days and they got very shit information. And my channel is about weight pull-ups and weight calisthenics and programming. And so I found it, I would find it wrong of me to not make a video about this. Um, so here I am making the video. So if you have any more questions or thoughts or advice or whatever, drop it down below in the comments. I will make sure that I watch or like I look at all of them and I will uh, reply to all, all of them like I always do. Um, and for now, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe, uh, share the video and I'll see you guys next week for another programming video. So see you later. Bye.